In this problem, we're told a 0.72 meter diameter solid sphere can be rotated about an axis through its center by a torque of 10.8 newton meters, which accelerates it uniformly from rest through a total of 180 revolutions in 15 seconds. What is the mass of the sphere? So before we solve this problem, let's write down everything that we're given. So what's our given? So we know the diameter of our solid sphere, right? So diameter is going to be equal to 0.72 meters. So that's our diameter, and they tell us it's going to have a torque, right, rotated through this torque, or by this torque, which is 10.8 newton meters. So that's going to be the torque, and then we know it's going to accelerate uniformly from rest through a total of 180 revolutions in 15 seconds. So the initial angular velocity, they tell us it starts from rest, it's going to be zero. So zero radians per second, and then it's going to go through a total of 180 revolutions, so theta right, which is just our distance essentially, is 180 refs. And then the time this takes is 15 seconds. So time, 15 seconds. Cool. And then what we're trying to do is find the mass. So mass equals question mark. So how do we solve this problem? So just like the last few problems, we're going to be relating torque. So you need to know this formula. Torque equals inertia multiplied by angular acceleration or alpha. And so what you should notice here is that we're given torque. And then what we can do is inertia you, is going to have a mass variable, and that's what we're going to use to solve for the mass. And then we can solve for the angular acceleration, uh, given the variables that we have. And that's going to allow us to solve this equation. So let's go ahead and just start plugging some stuff in. So this is going to be 10.8 newton meters, right? Just plugging in the torque. And then we have to determine uh, inertia and angular acceleration. Let's go ahead and actually start with angular acceleration. So I'm actually going to erase this. So let's start with angular acceleration. So in order to solve for the angular acceleration, you need to know uh, the formulas, right? So there's a bunch of equations that are kind of like kinematics, but they're for when rotating, right? So you should know these. And so one of them is going to relate all these variables, which is, uh, or the equation is theta is equal to theta sub zero plus angular velocity times t plus one half times angular acceleration times t squared. So you should notice it's just like kinematics. Uh, this is just delta x in the other one, and then this is v and this is a. So it's kind of like kinematics, but just for rotational. And so what you should notice here is we have a bunch of these variables, right? So theta, we know, is 180 revolutions, right? Theta is zero, this is zero. Uh, angular, or angular velocity, or the initial, is zero. So this is just gonna go to zero. And then what you should notice is theta equals one half, alpha times t squared. And what we can do is solve for alpha, right? Because we have t and we have this, so we're going to be able to solve for uh, angular acceleration. So if we multiply both sides by 2 and then divide by t squared, you're just going to get that alpha equals uh, 2 theta over t squared. So that's good that we have. So now what we can do is plug this in. And I'm going to plug in all the variables, and then we're going to solve. So I'll plug them in at the end. So now we have... Uh, this. So we got that. Now let's solve for inertia. So there's a bunch of equations for inertia depending on the type of object that you're using. So in this case, uh, we're using, or it's going to be an object rotated about an axis through a center, so a solid sphere. And the equation that you use for this one is 2 over 5 times m r squared. So this is the equation you use for inertia when you're rotating through a sphere or a sphere through its center. And so, yeah, this is the equation. There's a bunch of equations. I, I recommend looking at your textbook, and they'll tell you which one to use depending on the situation. But this is the one we use in this situation. So now we have this equation for inertia. We have this equation for uh, alpha, right, or angular acceleration, and we have torque. So and notice how we have theta, we have t, we have r, so we can solve for m. So if we plug all these in, uh, right, so 10.8, or actually, let's just plug in the variables. So t equals uh, inertia, which is 2 over 5 m r squared times uh, angular acceleration. So 2 pi, or 2 theta, sorry, over t squared. So we got to solve for m, because that's what we're trying to find. So let's manipulate this to solve for m. So multiply both sides by t squared. So t squared times torque equals 2 over 5 m r squared times 2 theta. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 over 2. So multiplying both sides by 5 over 2, 
five over two t squared times torque. That's get that's get uh, that's gonna get rid of this, right? So that's gone now since we multiply both sides by five over two, and then we just have m r squared times two theta. So if we divide both sides by r squared two theta, right? So if you go ahead and do that, that'll go, and then you're dividing by r squared two theta. So essentially, you're gonna get the mass equals five over two, and then you're dividing by two. So this is four now. So five over four, or let me write it like this, five times t squared times the torque over four, and then it's just r squared times theta. Yeah, so that's gonna be that now. So this is gonna be our equation. So what we can do now is just plug in the variables. So m is going to be equal to five times t squared. So t is 15, so 15 squared times the torque, which is 10.8 newton meters, right? We're just plugging in each variable, divided by four times r squared, and r is, so r, we know the diameter, so we can just find the radius, which is 0.36, it's just half, because the diameter is 2r, so 0.36 squared. And then when we do this, this has to be in radians, it can't be in revolutions, so we have to convert it. So 180 revolutions, you need to know 1 rev equals 2 pi radians. So if that's the case, we can just multiply this number by 2 pi. So 180 times 2 pi, if we just multiply by the 2, it's 360, and then 360 pi. So 360 pi radians. Uh, yeah, so 360 pi radians, we can plug that in for theta now. So 360 pi radians. So essentially we have 5 times 15 squared times 10.8 over four times 0.36 squared uh, times 360 pi, right? So if you go ahead and plug this in your calculator, uh, you're gonna get a decimal, and what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and round this. So I'm just gonna say 21 kilograms, right? So I'm actually, I'm actually gonna plug it in. So five times 15 squared, multiply that by 10.8, then we're gonna divide that whole number by four, times 0.36 squared. Here, one second. So it's four times 0.36 squared. Yeah, so essentially if you do this, plug in your calculator and then round, you're gonna get 21 kilograms. Sorry about that. So yeah, 21 kilograms. Uh, this right here is going to be your answer, and uh, yeah, hopefully you found this useful.